Tewe? Oh, Jonathan Tewe, born 40 years, uh, some 40 this year. Um, grew up in Osu, uh, left in the mid-80s, the mid you know, to the UK, did my university, my master's, worked for an investment bank, uh, and then came down to Ghana 10 years ago to set up Austec. Mm, that's interesting. You started as an investment banker. Yes, my route into IT um, was rather uh, from the financial services end of it. So I had done things like uh, uh, cost of IT ownership, uh, technology investments, and so on into Eastern Europe. Um, so coming to Ghana, I think IT was, if I wasn't doing financial services, IT was the next best thing. And um, I was particularly interested in something called managed services. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we came in and we put our money into managed services um, back then, 10 years ago. So what's, what's OSTEC? What, what does it stand for? O-S-T-E-C? <laughs> this is it. Right, well, I wasn't going to reveal this one. But um, what we started, the company was actually registered uh, 10 years ago as WBS. And um, let's mm -hmm. not go into that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did something called on-site training for enterprise and colleges, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, which is OSTEC. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, we, um, I think when, when the invoices go out, they go out as the OSTEC program. Mm -hmm. And um, so very soon we had companies writing checks to OSTEC and not the company name. Uh, we had people calling us OSTEC and not the WBS and so on. Uh, so a few years ago, we changed company name and registered the name Ostec as mm. the company name. It's oh, a little bit like a vacuum cleaner in Hoover. <laughs> was the beginning difficult? There are issues in, in, in developing countries about uh, raising capital, about mm. bottlenecks in uh, registering mm. companies, mm. about mm. corporate governance and stuff like that. It Did you have tough. issues? It was tough. We came in, um, you know, again, back in 2001. Um, I remember the particular bank that we had first approached. Um, had said to me that, you know, you need to bank with us for a whole year. Um, even, you know, we had, I had collateral at the time, um, but, you know, still wouldn't, you know, you wanted a, credit. You wanted a bank we facility. wanted a facility. And they wanted to see your cash flow for one year. They wanted us to have, not just have, well, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you know, we need to show you um, forecasting and going forward. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you need to see that the business makes sense, it's viable, it will make money for the bank as well and then give us the money. But they wanted us to have banked with them for a whole year and then, you know, start having a conversation about investing in the business or, you know, giving us... Oh, it wasn't automatic. Banking no. for one year was not. No. So it was, it was a hard slog. We started business uh, in a small room. It was myself and two other engineers. Um, it, um, it was tough. We were... I was doing all the sales. I was doing the accounts. I was, you know, running around being the driver for the business. Uh, but it, it was hard work and, um, you know, we, we knew that we had a product or we had a service to deliver and, and it was, you know, eventually going to be profitable. And what, what was your key com com competitive advantage at the time? Well, uh, managed service, when we moved into, or when I set up this business, um, you know, again, going back 10 years ago, the um, key thing for IT services uh, in Ghana, and you couldn't really call it IT services, what it was, and was companies selling boxes. Mm -hmm. You know, so a company would sell you a couple of PCs, mm -hmm. a switch here and there, might put it together for you, go away. If you had a problem, you call them, they may or may not turn up and you have all sorts of issues. Um, when we came in and I set up this business, I, I thought the key differentiator for us was gonna be something called managed services, mm -hmm. where we would come in, um, essentially own the equipment in your office. So we would deliver all the equipments, we would own them. We would do all the integration, set them up for you, and then we will manage the equipment for you going forward. Okay, so we were uh, doing this so companies can realize the true value uh, or benefits so if, of benefits. So if you came into Metro TV and we needed seven computers, you will own them? Well, we will come in and... And you set them up for us? We'll set them up. It's a and little you give bit a, more... you set up our email stuff and everything? We'll do all of that. So, and, and you and, connect and, us to our international partners? Absolutely. We are okay. doing, um, in the last sort of three or four years, we've been building some of the biggest... Uh, connectivity, cross-border connectivity uh, solutions uh, in this part of the world. Mm. We built, um, we have um, links uh, that go beyond uh, West Africa into Eastern uh, Africa and into the Central African Republic. Um, we probably have the largest VSAT uh, network across uh, West Africa. Uh, we're building... VSAT is a satellite, is it? It's, um, yes, and I see you have a couple of them here. Yeah. Basically, you know, we have one of our specialist areas uh, is building connectivity for uh, plantations. So these are organizations that operate 
uh, in extremely re remote areas uh, and are looking to achieve connectivity back to maybe head office in Accra. And, and in the case of some of our customers, achieving connectivity into Europe and, and the US as well. So, you know, we're going out, we're using VSAT to uh, connect the plantations uh, back to uh, Accra and then on to Europe and so on. Uh, and we've done one, in fact, recently where we're actually connecting uh, a company um, across West Africa into their offices in Europe, and we've gone into Europe and mounted VSATs and, and, and you know, installed well, them see, there as well. That's an interesting story. I'm sure mm. later we can hear the details about that. That's, mm. that's very interesting. So this, this was your specialization, the, mm. the management part of the IT. Yes, the owning, uh, you know, coming to you and saying, look, you can concentrate on your business, focus on running your business, you know, uh, and chasing... Uh, uh, profits and, and, and you know all the things that you want to do uh, as, uh, as your entity if you like. Leave the IT side for us, uh, we will put it in, we will manage it, we will do all the refreshing, all the upgrades and you can just focus on your business. That's basically the differentiator so, for us. So CEOs don't have to worry about the computer didn't, didn't show up uh, today, did it? They didn't turn on? They don't even have to worry about the IT manager on site because mm -hmm. we do all of that. Um, we have somewhere in the so, region. So this differentiation mattered, you think? Was, was it, it, a, it made a difference. Was it a critical catalyst in your success story? Well, I mean, initially it was tough. We walked into an environment where um, companies were not entirely comfortable in handing over their IT investment. You know, we, you know, we were going to businesses and saying to them, look, you're better off um, selling all your IT equipment to us and we will lease it back to you. We will do all the upgrading going forward you know, outsource your IT employees to us, we will, because you know, one of the things that was happening is you employ an IT manager, but he doesn't necessarily have all the specialist skills mm -hmm. in order to deliver the solutions you're looking for. So you come to companies like us, we, you know, we charge you extra money, meanwhile you have bodies on the ground that can't, you know, really do the job, but they're on your payroll. We take all these guys, we give you first level support uh, engineers, and then we have at the back office, you know, highly skilled engineers that can come out uh, as and when you need them, you pay a very small fee for it. Mm. So that is how we started. I, I see. Okay. So, so, so trust was an important part of your business. It was. We realized because you very were going quickly. to take control yes. of people's uh, mm. corporate Absolutely. Secrets, intellectual property. Absolutely. And so trust was an yes. important part of it. I guess you could say the market wasn't ready for it when we, you know, we, we got in and realized this was going to be the key differentiator for us. Uh, but the market wasn't ready for it. So. Uh, one of the things that we went through was to do what the market was doing. That is, you know, we went through the selling of boxes just mm -hmm. like our competitors were doing. Uh, and this business actually became profitable doing just that, selling boxes and all the other things that the other companies were doing. But then, you know, after year four or five, uh, we had the balance sheet uh, to go to the larger companies and, and put in the IT investment for them and put in the engineers to run it for them as well. Uh, and I, I guess, you know, by year four, year five, you know, companies were coming around to the whole managed services approach, which is something that we were keen on doing. And, and right now, it's a, is, it, is it like a custom way of doing things? Well, I think, you know, we've been, um, we, we still find that it is difficult, um, you know, trying to persuade uh, some of our local businesses here to do it. What we find, we've been fairly successful in dealing with companies like British Telecom and so on. Uh, BT Global Services, where they are, you know, BT size global contracts to manage people's IT investments for them. And in this part of the world, we do it for BT Global Services. Mm. Uh, so we're finding that, you this know, the part larger, of the world means, means the sub region or the, the entire sub region. The, 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 the sub region, okay. West Africa, yeah. Mm. Including and now, Nigeria? Yes, yes. Then you have big business. Well, <laughs> we, it's hard work. Um, we have uh, offices in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Gabon, uh, Mali. Uh, Togo, um, uh, did I say Gabon? Yes, yes and you did. and and, um, uh, and Guinea as well. Yeah. So it means that uh, IT penetration is mm. in Africa is, is growing rapidly. Isn't yes, it? yes, and mm. and you know also the fact that we have all these cable, uh, internet cable connections coming into uh, Ghana mm -hmm. that helps um, that helps in um, getting the penetration out there. We're seeing um, you know more and more. Uh, and in fact, when you look at your telephone, um, your mobile phone, you know, the number of subscribers that are on, you know, 3G uh, networks mm -hmm. with their, um, you know, hand, handsets that can do their internet and, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, we're seeing all of that grow. Uh, and, and, you know, for that reason, we're seeing, you know, our market share 
uh, in managed services grow as well. Mm. Mm. That's interesting. Let, let's, let's talk a bit about your management style, mm. uh, because I've been told that that was an important part of the success story. Uh, what do you think some CEOs do wrong, and, and what did you really do right? Oh, I think, um, and again, I'll just use an example. I was talking to um, a property developer, a friend of mine, just a few days ago, and you know, she was looking to um, develop a, you know, a facility, and she was looking at two or three other ones that she wanted to do at the same time. Um, and, and you know, my advice was, you know, why don't you just do one and finish it? Because you've never done this before. Do one, finish it, get through the experience, and maybe you can do two or three at the same time after you've done this one. And I think the difference is we try to do too much. Mm. Keep it simple. As CEOs. As CEOs, mm. yes, we try to do too much. Keep it simple. Um, you know, get one thing done. Um, you know, because I, I know also that in Ghana we try to run so many, you know, a few different businesses at the same time. You know, get one thing done, do it well, um, and then, you know, go on to do other things. I think we're... Um, you know, just doing too much. And, you know, so my principles... You, you, you are an a, apologist of specialization, isn't it? You, you like specialization. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we can, again, you know, if you look at our example, you know, we went into the IT industry, uh, saw a gap for managed services, decided that we were going to focus on managed services. Uh, and we have grown, um, you know, I think our growth exceeds the industry average over the past 10 years. We've, you know, year-on-year year double turnover. Uh, for all of that period, uh, because you know the, the the niche was there, that was the niche, and, and we've gone in there and we've focused on it. So if you can focus uh, uh, on whatever it is you're doing, I think the you know mm. we're a developing country. So focus is the key word for CEOs of mm. startups. Mm. Just focus. Did you, was it difficult finding staff? Because I, IT is a technical area, and uh, I know some universities in Ghana train IT people, but I'm not right. sure about the uh, yeah. how compatible they are with international best standards. Well, I think we're trying. It's, it's hard where we've got, um, we've got some way to go, but I think the universities are trying. The, you know, we have, uh, and again, this year we've had a few interns from the universities. Um, I think, you know, I, I can see progress. Uh, there's a long way to go, but I can see progress. I think um, we need to get uh, a little bit more practical know-how into some of our IT courses, mm -hmm. uh, but I think the universities are doing that. Um, you know, we take on two or three grants a year and find that, you know, they need a little bit of polishing, um, you know, basic things like grammar and so on. Grammar? Um, I, yeah. I said English grammar. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, I see. You know, so, the, you know, when you... Communication you're, skills. Exactly. Um, uh, but, you know, IT skills are not quite there for, you know, your IT engineers that are coming out. But, you know, the, the group of, you know, interns that we took on this year, um, you know, you can immediately see that, you know, if you look back to three years ago and what's happening now, that the universities are really pulling their weight now. And, and you take and interns only from the IT training centers, like uh, computer science graduates? We take them you from... You don't take history graduates? Well, no, not at the moment. Um, you know, we're a highly specialist, uh, you know, company, and uh, we'd like you to have a little bit of background mm. in what we do from the university uh, before you join us. Mm. And, and like I said, I can see improvements coming through. Let, let, let me, let me uh, told, there's a big mm. business for the Indian government, mm -hmm. and they make billions of dollars from it. It's basically right. the situation where a person goes to buy a shop, uh, something from a shop in the United States mm -hmm. or in England, and uh, there's something right. wrong with it. He makes a phone call, mm -hmm. and that phone call is routed straight to India. He's talking to somebody in India right. about the product he's just bought in New York, right. and the person is able to tell him what to do, right. that this kind of service that India receives mm -hmm. uh, makes them a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And people are thinking that Africa, with its geographical position, mm -hmm. and perhaps with this uh, similarity of to the exactly. English language, yes. we will be able to get that. But it's not happening. Is there, is there, is there it will happen. A light at the end of the tunnel? In I the think room? it will happen. You know, I'm very encouraged. We have all this, again, these cables that are coming in, the submarine cables that are coming. We have SAT-3, Glow-1 that is here. All the different cables that are the coming internet in. internet capacity. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And, you know, you need that. You know, we, didn't, we couldn't do this three or four years ago because we didn't quite have... Uh, the capacity and the prices were not right. The cost wasn't right for uh, companies to go into uh, this and do it. Uh, but the cables are here now. Uh, pricing, you know, is improving. We we're paying something like 20% of what we paid uh, for the same capacity, say three or four years ago. Um, so cost is going down. Uh, we have the hum human resources here to do it. Like you said, you know, um, we're an English-speaking country, um, and and you know, I can see. 
uh, I can, you know, over the next year or two, as prices drop, especially for connectivity, I can see more companies going to outsourcing mm -hmm. uh, and taking calls here, as you put it. Yeah. I'm sure it's a good time for you, Jonathan. Congratulations.